Hi, I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. In this video we'll continue with learning to blur an image. But as always a short disclaimer first. This tutorial series is mainly for hobby programmers who struggle with understanding shaders. I'm not a professional programmer and I'm not very good at maths, so if you see any mistake in my video or see a better way to solve a problem, please add a comment so everyone can learn from you. In the last two videos we first created a horribly inefficient single pass blur shader and then improved the performance a lot by blurring in two passes instead of one. Now it's time to add another improvement. We're going to use the GPU's linear texture filter to nearly half the samples needed to blur at nearly no additional cost. This technique is well described on two internet sites I've found. Efficient Gaussian Blur with Linear Sampling by Daniel Rakos and Optimizing Gaussian Blurs on Mobile GPU by Brad Lawson. I've linked both in the description below this video if you're interested in that. Now let's see how this works. This is a scaled up texture. And this grid represents the kernel we use to blur. And these are the texels to get samples from when blurring horizontally. The center sample and the blur samples with negative and positive offsets. Now let's just focus on that horizontal blur. So what we did in discrete sampling so far was this. We calculated the texel size and moved left and right of the current fragment by the texel size to get samples of each texel inside the kernel. We then weighed each sample based on the Gaussian equation and mixed them together to give the center's fragment its blurred color. But we don't absolutely need to take discrete samples from the center of a texel. If we set the GPU to use its linear interpolation filter and start at an offset of one and a half texel widths instead of one texel width, we can force the GPU to take an interpolated sample between the texels. If we do that, the GPU returns a color interpolated from the colors of the closest texels. The nice thing about this is that the GPU can do this interpolation at nearly no additional cost. But unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. If we just take samples exactly between the texels like seen here, then the GPU will take as much color from the texel on the left of the sample coordinates as from the right. Let's for example take a sample between the discrete sample offsets 1 and 2. If we take a sample there, the GPU would take as much color from the sample at offset 1 as from the sample at offset 2. But to get a nice blur, we'd need to get more color from the sample at offset 1, because the closer the sample is to the center, the higher its weight has to be due to the Gaussian equation. This means we need to shift the offsets a bit towards the center, so when the GPU interpolates the colors of the two texels, it favors the color of the closer texel. And since the difference in weights of two neighboring texels decreases, the farther away those two texels are from the center, this shifting amount needs to decrease as well. That's why the offset of the interpolated sample between discrete offsets 1 and 2 needs to shift more towards the center than the offset of the interpolated sample between the discrete offsets 3 and 4. So instead of taking 9 discrete samples as in the last video, all we need are these 5 samples. The center discrete sample, two interpolated samples to the left, and two interpolated samples to the right. Sounds complicated, and I think it is. But if we get the maths right, that means we can nearly half the samples needed to get the exact same blur size and quality. Unfortunately, I was not able to do the math for something like that. Fortunately, however, I didn't have to. This formula I found in the article Efficient Gaussian Blur with Linear Sampling by Daniel Rakos. A link is in the description of this video. The letter L means linear interpolated weight and offset and the letter D means discrete weight and offset of a sample. The numbers 1 and 2 refer to the two neighboring texels we're getting a sample from. So what this means is this. The weight of a linear interpolated sample between two neighboring texels, texel 1 and texel 2, is the same as the sum of the weights of those two neighboring discrete samples. 
And to get the offsets of a linear interpolated sample, we need to multiply the discrete weights and offsets of Texel 1 and Texel 2 and divide their sum by the weight of the linear interpolated sample. I can't explain why, I just can accept that this works in theory, so sorry for that. But we just need to make this work in code. However, before we do that, there's not a problem. In our example, I made sure the sides of the kernel are an even number. But watch if they're not. Here's a quick overview of how you'd take the samples then. We wouldn't take a sample in the center. We get the center color by starting the interpolation one offset earlier, like seen in this image. Of course, we'd still have to shift the offsets like we did before to get a correct result. In my code, I'm ignoring the second option and write the code so that the sides are always even. But feel free to implement both versions if you want to. It shouldn't be too complicated, really. So let's finally start coding this. I'll quickly copy the shader we created in the last video, which was called Shader Blur 2 Pass Gaussian Discrete, and change the name of the duplicate to Shader Blur 2 Pass Gauss Lerp. I'll also copy the last video's object and name it Object Blur 2 Pass Gauss Lerp and place it on the main layer of our test room. For this and the next video, we'll need some toggle buttons. So let's move and stretch the kill modifiers so that we get four toggle buttons in toggle group 0 and one toggle button in toggle group 1. In create event, I'll quickly change the info text of the base project. Then we should also change the shader to our newly created version. And the only other thing we need to do here in create event is set the caption of toggle button 0 in toggle group 1. I'll use this toggle to turn the GPU's linear interpolation on and off to compare. The cleanup event can stay as it is. But in jar GUI begin event we need to change quite a bit. We only need half the blur steps for the linear interpolated samples. So I'm going to rename blur steps to blur steps D for discrete and add another line to get half the steps, but seal instead of round the result to always get at least one step. And later we'll also need the kernel size of the discrete and the lerp blur. So I'll add two lines for these as well. Now to tell the GPU to interpolate the samples, we can use the function GPU set text filter. And to be able to toggle this on and off in the test room, I'll create another variable to store the state of the toggle button 0 in toggle group 1. Then just before setting the shader, I'll turn on linear interpolation if that toggle button is on. In Game Maker 1, I think this function is called texture set interpolation. And right after resetting the shader, I'll turn it off again. Now of course, if your game is set to interpolate texels anyways, you could ignore both lines. But either way, just make sure the interpolation is turned on when this shader runs. We won't need to change anything in the surface and shader blocks. So the rest I'm doing in draw GUI begin event is just for the corner info of my base project and not for the shader per se. We can remove the kernel line here since we already calculated the kernel at the start of this event. Samples per pixel and samples per image stay the same. And better than one pass needs to use kernel underscore D now. But that's it for the object, so let's move on to the fragment shader. In the first version we're going to just change the code so the fragment shader takes samples exactly between the texels. The center sample is taken up here and we can keep it that way. Also the total weight and the kernel calculation stay as they are, we will only change the for loop. So far we picked the center sample, then the offset starting at 1 and increasing the offset by 1 texel width per loop. To get the samples between two texels, we'll now start with an offset of 1.5, the sample between the first and the second neighboring texels. 
And since we're now always getting one sample per two texels, we'll increment the offsets by two instead of one. But to do all blow steps, and since we half the amount of blow steps in draw event, we will loop this while the offset is smaller or equal to two times the blur steps. I realized while writing the script of this video that this new loop could be tricky to understand. So let's make an example. The upper third is what we did with discrete samples. Setting the blur steps in draw GUI begin to six meant the for loop inside the fragment shader loops through the offsets one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that code picked six plus six plus one samples on every textile center of the kernel. The middle third is what we just did now with the lerping method. Blur steps discrete is six. So blur steps with lerping is six divided by two, so three steps. And the for loop inside the fragment shader then loops through these offsets. 1.5, 3.5 and 5.5. Basically picking the samples exactly between two neighboring texels and thus nearly halving the number of samples taking. Three plus three plus one, so seven instead of 13. Now, if you want to, you could, for better performance, move that multiplication to the draw GUI begin event as shown in the last third. But the middle version to me shows better what I'm doing, which is why I did it that way. So let's run this and see what it looks like. If we compare the last and the new shader, we'll see it's not the same. The last shader blurs more than this one. That's unexpected. At this point, I thought we'll just see a difference in blur quality, not in blur size. But the reason and solution is simple. Let's quickly go back to the draw GUI begin event and fix this. The reason was how sigma is calculated. For this shader to look the same as with discrete samples, we also need to increase sigma. So let's add underscore D to sigma for the discrete version and add a new line for the interpolated version. Sigma is sigma discrete times kernel discrete divided by kernel. I first thought I'd just set sigma to twice as much and that worked better, but it still wasn't perfect. Now the blur size of the new shader was a bit larger than before, but eventually I realized we need to multiply sigma discrete by the relation of the kernels. These changes to sigma were not necessary to make the shader look right just to make it look the same as the old shader with the same slider settings of our test project. So when using the shader in a game, I just manually set a sigma that looks right. Running this again now shows we're quite close to getting the same result as in the last shader, but we're not quite there yet because we're picking samples exactly in between two texels, ignoring the offset needed to stick with the Gaussian equation. So let's go back to the fragment shader and shift the sample offsets from exactly between the texels to somewhat closer to the center fragment, like we had seen on the graph at the beginning of this video. We'll need a bunch of new floats now. So let's remove offset and sample weight and replace them with offset D1, offset L, sample weight D1, sample weight D2, and sample weight L. Offset D1 is the discrete sample offset of the first texel of two neighboring texels. We won't need the offset of the second texel because that's always just plus one. Offset L is the interpolated sample offset between two texels. Sample weight D1 and D2 are the sample weights of both neighboring texels with discrete blurring. And sample weight L is the sample weight with lerped blurring. Now the loop instructions. All we do here is add an underscore D to all mentions of offset. And since we're going to calculate offset L inside the for loop, we will start this for loop at offset one again. And now we can implement these formulas. Sample weight is now sample weight discrete under discrete offset one. We can copy that line and change it to get the discrete weight too. And sample weight L is just the sum of the two discrete weights. Now we got everything for the offset formula. The offset for the linear interpolated sample is the discrete offset one times the discrete weight one plus 
the discrete offset 2 times the discrete weight 2, and all this divided by the weight of the linear sample. Now in the two sample lines and blur cold lines, we need to use the linear offset and the linear weights like this. And that's it. So let's run this a last time. So now whenever we're setting a kernel with an even number of blue steps on the last shader, this new shader looks exactly the same. So this works, same effect with nearly half as many samples. And turning on and off the linear interpolation filter on the GPU shows what the text filter actually does. Now to compare the improvement, I'm just going to set blur steps on this and the last object to an incredible 600 and run this again. Let's check the last shader first and crank up the blur steps to its max. So with this shader I'm getting around 30 fps. Switching to the new shader, we're getting about 50 FPS, so that's a huge improvement of another 60%. Before ending, I'll just set the blur steps on this and the last object back to 31. I did test this on my tablet, and although the new shader was faster than the last shader, it was not by as much. There I had an improvement of about 15%, still better than nothing, but I'm not sure what the bottleneck is on the tablet. If anyone knows, please tell us in the comments. And if you liked this tutorial series, please subscribe, give a thumbs up and add a comment once in a while. Not for monetarization, no plans there at all, but for visibility on search engines so everyone who wants to learn more about shaders can find this series. But that's it for today's video. We learned what the linear texture filter on the GPU does and how to use it and that it comes with virtually no additional cost. Next time we'll do another improvement by scaling before blurring. Until next time.